what I uh, what I try to do is uh, with training and one-on-one -on -one coaching with both managers and supervisors, leaders in organizations, and employees, is to help them create a work environment where they're more successful in terms of results and they have a, a higher level of satisfaction at the end of the day. How or when will a person or company know that they need uh, Bob Stizzy services? What are the signs that uh, these folks should look for? Well, uh, a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the folks that come to me, uh, it's to help uh, supervisors and managers uh, with social skills in particular. Um, the soft skills, as they call them, are actually the harder ones to learn. Uh, nothing against uh, technical training and technical skills, but when you think about it, once you learn a technical skill, how to operate a machine, uh, run a program, uh, uh, prepare taxes for somebody, you can only get better at it with more information. But when it comes to interacting with individuals, uh, rather uh, whether you're a, a manager or supervisor or employee, not so easy to get good at that. There are conflicts and, and difficulties and problems to be solved throughout the workday. And the more effectively people can communicate and uh, understand what results are trying to accomplish, um, the better things go in the organization. I want to be treated with respect. You want to be treated with respect and dignity. I don't want to be bullied. Mm -hmm. And still we have these uh, bully bosses in contemporary society. I would assume that a bully boss would want to be treated with respect and, and dignity as well. How do these bosses come to be? Is there some common denominator? Do they go to bully school? Well, it, it's funny you say that because um, whether it's a manager or an employee, and we see it in, in it, anyone in an organization can be a bully, intimidating, rude, inappropriate in any number of ways. It happens for one reason in the workplace. It's the same reason it happens in, in, uh, in personal life. It's allowed to happen. Uh, in other words, if a, if a bully boss, uh, uh, and you, you'll probably see a high turnover rate, you'll see low productivity, you'll see a lot of problems in the organization as a result of that kind of a management style. But if that person superior or the board for that organization is not holding them accountable, that's how it happens. Just like an, an employee, even an entry level employee, can cause more problems than they solve in a day uh, by the way they interact with their coworkers. And um, how does that happen? Well, it happens if the person is not approached and, and told that what they're doing is, is not acceptable. In other words, if people are not being held accountable at any level, I think that's why it happens. I was in a situation where uh, there was a, a coworker that was uh, so bad, everyone in the office stopped speaking to her, mm -hmm. and still she kept her job. Right. Your well, reaction to that? I guess if it's possible to do an exceptional job and not communicate with anyone else in the organization, um, I guess it is possible. I think it's highly unlikely um, because you know we, we do affect one another. Uh, uh, in fact, recent uh, discoveries in brain science, uh, 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 especially information um, uh, from Daniel Goleman, uh, helps us understand exactly what's going on. When, when, when people are not communicating openly and honestly with each other, uh, when people are not cooperating with each other, uh, the emotional climate in the world workplace literally makes it impossible for people to excel at whatever it is that they're doing. Uh, I'll give you a little example. I had an HR manager call me a few years ago, and he said uh, one of his direct reports, the manager of safety for his organization, um, had great credentials, great experience, great knowledge. Oh, you know, she knows about everything about uh, uh, labor law, and he just, he just went into uh, uh, into great detail about you know what a great catch she was for the organization. He said, except for one thing, and I said, what? And he said that um, if she talks to three people in a day, and he said, Bob, I'm not exaggerating. If she talks to three people today, I have to talk to those three people tomorrow or later today, because literally every person that she talks to becomes so upset they complain about the way that this manager of safety treats them. And I said, well, uh, Mike, I said, it sounds like uh, uh, this person is causing more problems than they're solving. And he said, that's a good way to describe it. So you know, here's where the accountability comes in. I said, all right, Mike, she's a direct report. You do her performance evaluation? He said, yes. In fact, I just did it recently. I said, what did you evaluate her? He said, what do you mean? I said, what was her evaluation? It was consistently exceeds in all areas or something to that effect. In other words, what she was doing was completely unsatisfactory, yet when they sat down and talked about it, it didn't seem to be an issue. In fact, she was rated as exceeding all of those requirements. I guess the point I'm trying to make is someone that causes trouble, causes more problems in a day, and unfortunately, names will come to mind. You'll work with someone. Yes, they do, don't they? <laughs> well, yeah, and if you ever, you know, someone is not in today and everyone's happy because we're going to get more work right. done because that person's not 
got there, you have to question what is their contribution to the organization? And that's where a lot of the leadership training comes in. If a leader is an effective coach, First of all, people that are behaving in ways that are not conducive or maybe even flat out inappropriate, the first thing you have to do is let them know that what they're doing is wrong. If I've worked in a job intimidating people for 10 years, I'm going to do it for the next 10 years, especially if I enjoy it. And some people do. Some people, it's a way for them to exert power, uh, just like other inappropriate behaviors in the workplace. If I can't get my kicks, do what I'd like to do outside of work, sometimes that's where people do it. You know, the Casper Milk Toast individual that's yes dear, yes dear at home, and then is a horrible tyrant when they get to work, has a boss or has a board. There's someone that needs to let them know that what they're doing is wrong and to coach them to change their behavior. You quoted a Daniel Goleman. Who is Daniel Goleman? Daniel Goleman's probably most famous book is, uh, is uh, Emotional Intelligence, Working with Emotional Intelligence, and Primal Leadership. And uh, what Goleman talks about is five competencies that are extremely helpful in the workplace as well as outside of the workplace. He talks about, first of all, self-awareness. For example, um, even with the best intentions, we sometimes say and do the wrong things at work or outside of work, right? Foot in mouth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's what he calls an amygdala hijack. The amygdala, without getting very technical, is, is uh, a structure in the brain where the emotional part of the memory is stored. So let's say uh, we've had problems in the past as co-workers. Um, the alarm goes off. Oh, oh, you know, th this is likely to, to be a conflict. And if I have self-awareness, I process that consciously, think about it, and I'm careful about the way I interact with you. On the other hand, if my self-awareness is low, I may find myself saying and doing things that I later regret. And that's really what an amygdala hijack is. It's you're excited, you do something quickly, and when the dust settles, you think, uh-oh, why did I do that? Why did I say that? So this is very practical and helpful information, again, both inside and outside of work. After self-awareness, he talks about self-control, and he actually gives us very good information in terms of practical things we can do to maintain control. And this is really at the heart of so many things. Uh, it, it's impulse control. In other words, people who can delay gratification, people can, that can think before they act. And this is something anyone can improve in through practice, through exercising it just like a muscle, if you will. The more you practice this idea of, of, of thinking before you act, of, of uh, waiting before you, uh, um, you know, instead of seeking immediate uh, gratification, uh, the better you're able to respond in a more appropriate way. Um, three other things that he talks about which are very, very helpful uh, are motivation, empathy, and social skills. And actually, all of Goldman's uh, competencies in emotional intelligence really end up uh, helping us with our social skills and here's the amazing find in my mind, when, when it comes to people's success in life and especially in the workplace, your emotional intelligence or your ability to deal with your own emotions and interact effectively with other people is by far the most important ingredient to your success, much more than even the techni technical skills which you need to do your job or your IQ. So IQ and technical skills combined are almost nothing compared to your ability to effectively communicate and interact with other people. And that's where this information really is helpful. What uh, will uh, the first thing be when you go to that company? What will the first thing do, be that you, what, what are you going to do first? Well, in this line of work, you would call it needs. That was a very uh, poorly worded question. <laughs> well, well no, I, I know what you mean. It's, it's, uh, to find out what, what they need is, uh, you would call it a needs assessment. And uh, I might sit down with you and say, well, Bob, um, uh, we have a team in the organization where uh, uh, um, they're, uh, they have this project that they're working on, the stress level is very high, and they're having a lot of conflict, for example. Uh, is there anything you can uh, do to help us. And uh, what we might do in a case like that is uh, talk to some of the members of the team individually and um, in most cases have a workshop where uh, we have structured information to help people understand how to resolve conflicts in a team, uh, but also actually to work through some of the issues. So um, uh, very often I get involved with things like strategic planning, uh, uh, not just the skills that enable you to do the strategic planning, but um, uh, sometimes I'm called on for, uh, uh, in many cases, meeting facilities. Um, I, I read somewhere, I think Ken Blanchard said that um, uh, meetings are places where people take minutes and waste hours. And uh, unproductive meetings are not just frustrating, but they really hit the bottom line in terms of the expense of having these unproductive meetings. So I both teach people how to facilitate productive meetings and facilitate them for them in many cases. Now, you work on improving uh, management performance. Uh, how does STESI uh, Associates do that? 
Well, fortunately, there's a ton of uh, excellent information out there about leadership. Uh, when I became a new manager in 1984, um, I guess I was kind of lucky because that's when the One Minute Manager came out, 1984, 1985, in that time frame. And uh, Ken Blanchard and Spencer Johnson and people like Daniel Goleman and Stephen Covey, there's, uh, there's just a whole list of, of folks out there that are both experienced leaders and experts in um, interactions between people. So there's great stuff to share with people, um, in particular, coaching skills, how to diagnose uh, when there's a problem uh, uh, with someone's performance, or how, how to help people whose performance is good to go to the next level. One thing I've heard, it's your boss likes to be appreciated as well, and uh, mm -hmm. a regular employee should compliment their boss when they're doing something well. It makes them feel good. I agree. I agree. And, and uh, on the other hand, I, I really believe that the boss should take the first step, and, and they often don't. And that's one of the things that we emphasize. Um, there's a term that the Hewlett Packard uh, uh, Corporation came up with years ago called MBWA, Managing by Wandering Around. And this is the manager that's not wandering around aimlessly, but takes the time to talk to employees, uh, as well as vendors, suppliers, and customers, and not just to talk, not just to, to, to present themselves, but to literally establish relationships. So I'll give you an example the opposite. I was talking to an employee that said um, the uh, it was a manufacturing organization and he said the plant general manager walks by my workstation every morning and he's done so for the last 10 years. And I said, and so what's your point? He said he doesn't know my name. He said he looks at me, he nods, sometimes he says hello, but he doesn't know my name. Now you can't have positive influence with people if there's no relationship, and this is even worse. This shows that you are just, in fact, the way he described himself, he said, I feel like I'm part of the furniture. Well, on the other hand, we've all had, hopefully, some bosses who really cared about us, cared about the organization, and that's really what it takes. You need to have positive interactions with people in order to establish trust, because without trust, you don't have uh, effective communication and no way to influence one another in a positive way. Does STESI uh, training and consulting do um lectures or presentations which are open to the general public? Well, yeah, you know, uh, very often I'll get called on for a keynote talk. Uh, uh, one that was really a lot of fun last year was the Invention Convention. Uh, and these are children. Where was that held? Uh, this was in Binghamton. And, and, and these were children uh, uh, from all over the country, by the way, uh, who have made inventions uh, from first to eighth grade. And, and, and this is just amazing to me that these kids are inventors already. And I had the opportunity. Now, I have never invented anything myself. <clears throat> and the person that asked me to do it said, Bob, uh, and I'm not sure if this was a compliment, he said, I think you can talk in a way that children can understand as well as their parents and grandparents that are there. But anyway, uh, it was so much fun because I genuinely have a lot, uh, an incredible amount of respect for these kids that are using their heads uh, to try to make life better for people. And that's how I opened that particular talk. I said, there's a lot of difficult stuff and bad stuff going on in the world, but it's the inventors. The inventors are the people that try to make life more healthy for people, uh, make people happier, make life easier, make life nicer. Or you're, the, you're a force of good. And what you hope when you do a talk like that is these kids in first or second or fifth or eighth grade remember that what they're doing is not just fun, but it's really important to so continue to do those things for us. So it's, it's just so much fun. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm trying not to uh, have you give away for free what you, uh, you know, make a living on. But what advice would you offer to employers and employees to be successful in 2011 as we wrap up the show? Well, I, I think the most important thing is, is honesty. Um, you have to communicate to people in an honest way. Without trust, nothing else happens. Uh, just very briefly, if you've ever worked for someone who's a liar, they can't influence you very well. On the other hand, when you trust someone, you know that their head and heart's in the right place. And by the way, even when they make a mistake, you can forgive them because you trust them.